name's Jeff Adams. I'll be your facilitator here. I want to welcome you to Safety by Design. Uh, part of what makes Jeep one of the U.S.'s most authentic brands is how they've been able to remain true to their name over the years. And since we are a go anywhere, do anything brand, our number one priority is safety. The new Renegade has a combination of 70 standard and available safety features. And for your benefit, we've listed them all up on this giant board for you. They're also located in your workbooks on page 76 through 82. Also, you're going to notice that they're all numbered, 1 through 70. Those numbers actually correspond with all the lollipops that are stuck all around the cutaway. So if you're unfamiliar where an actual, where an actual feature is located, they're in the exact spot that they're supposed to be. Kind of the area though. Also, we have a couple circles, these silver circles, stickers, next to all the numbers. Those are stating all the standard features. So if you didn't know which ones were standard, there you go. All the ones that are up there are standard are with the silver stickers. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to have enough time to go over all 70 of them. Uh, we can if you want. But what we will do is we're going to spend some time looking at some of the more high-tech safety features. Starting with number two. Active turn signals. Who can tell me what active turn signals do? Besides just let the person behind us know that we're turning. When do they do that? When you turn the wheel all the way. When you turn the wheel all the way, but also when you tap the stock, they're going to blink three times and uh, for changing lanes. And also they have a sensor located on them where if you have your turn signal left on for longer than a mile, they will actually alert the driver with an audible and a visual alert. Next one we have is number 25, and it's a standard feature, EARS, Enhanced Accident Response System. Who's heard of this one before? Yes, sir. And what does it do? I think that turns the interior lights on and unlocks the door so you can get out. 50%? Shuts down the fuel thing. Absolutely. The fuel line. And one more thing. Turns the hazard lights on. Absolutely. So in the event of a airbag deployment, it's going to turn on all the interior lights. It's going to turn on the flashers. It's also going to unlock all the doors, and it's going to cut the fuel to the engine to help minimize the fire from happening. And with the hazards, it's very easy to hit that hazard button on a day-to-day -day basis. But imagine rolling over a couple times. It's not easy to find that hazard button. So all that stuff is going to come on, and it's standard on all the Renegades. The next one is number 42, Hill Start Assist. Who can tell me what this one does? When you're on an incline, absolutely. It helps prevent uh, rollback. Number 50, Ready Alert Braking, R-A-B. And this one's standard on all the Renegades. <clears throat> Who's heard of this one before? Well, what this one does is when the system senses that you have removed your foot in an emergency fashion from the accelerator or in a fast pace, what's usually the next step? You're going to slam on the brakes, right? Absolutely. So the system is a lot quicker than us with the reflexes. So when it senses that, it automatically butts those brake pads up against the rotors to minimize the time that normally it would take from us to put our foot from the accelerator to the brake. And those couple seconds can help determine whether we hit that car in front of us or we don't hit that car in front of us. The next one, uh, security alarm, number 55. What does this one do? Deters death. Defers death? Death? Absolutely. When, uh, that's one part of it. When someone tries to break in the vehicle, the alarm's going to go off. But it also has a leveling sensor on it as well. So if someone tries to raise up your vehicle and take your tires, or when the vehicle's locked, they, they try to tow your vehicle away, the alarm's going to go off as well. Uh, the last group made a joke and said that it will also notify you uh, when you know, the repo company comes and picks up your car as well, all right? And it's not going to, you know, stop them from taking your car, but at least it's going to wake you up in the middle of the night and stop you from calling the cops because you think someone stole it, all right? So that's part of it. Uh, it also has a sensor in the hood. So if someone tries to pry open your hood, the alarm system is going to go off. So a lot more than just trying to break into the cabin of the vehicle. The next one we have, the last one, number 65, trailer sway control, TSC. TSC and Bob, can you do the honor and point out number 65 for me, trailer sway control? Naturally, you would think it's back here. 
Would you be surprised if it's all the way up front? Number 65, right there? Right here. Right there. There you go. Huge. <laughs> Let's give a round of applause for that one, right? Now, what is trailer sway control? Or trailer sway? What does it do? It prevents the trailer from swaying, right? But how does it do it? How does it slow the vehicle? With the front brakes. Left or right front brakes. So left or right front brakes, and it also decreases engine speed as well. The only thing that's back there is the trailer, the hitch, and the connector. Okay? What's actually doing it is all located up front. Now since we're looking at the unibody um, construction, the unibody itself hosts three safety features. One of those is the energy management system, which is this area right here, which is made up of three load paths. And those three load paths minimize and divert any intrusions that might enter into the cabin. So that's one part. The second part is number 35, which are your front and rear crumple zones. Now how would you explain crumple zones to your customers? What do they do if I came in? Absolutely, they absorb the energy due to an impact. So they absorb that energy. You don't want to tell your customers they crumple. Okay, there's more than just crumpling. They absorb the energy due to an impact because they're made of weaker material. So by the time it gets to the stronger material, that energy will be dispersed and minimized. Uh, the third part is the safety cage. The safety cage not only helps uh, protect the occupants, but it also manages the energy due to a rollover or a collision as well. Now with the Renegade, 70% of the unibody construction is made up of high strength steel, magnesium, and aluminum, making it the first Jeep to use these materials to that extent. Next, with the, uh, with the new Renegade, it has seven standard airbags. Who can give me one location? That was three. Knee bolster is one. 23. Um, steering wheel is part of the multi-stage airbags. So we, it would be number three. So it's your steering wheel and your dash. Side curtain. Side curtain, which would be number four. We have two full side curtain airbags. And we have two more. Pelvic thorax, absolutely, which is number 38. So we have them in the left side of the driver and the right side of the passenger. So two in the front, two in the seat, two in the side curtains, and one in the steering wheel. And if this job doesn't work out, that can be a flight attendant. So it's the same thing they do, right? Absolutely. All right, next we're going to focus on the monitors over here. We have Forward Collision Warning Plus. And with the Forward Collision Warning Plus, this would be number 34 in your workbooks. And it would actually be located in three different positions. We have a forward-facing radar sensor. We also have a front camera, along with an electronic braking control unit, so three devices. And simply what it does is it alerts the driver when the Renegade is approaching another vehicle or another obstacle too rapidly. And we're going to take a closer look at this one. The forward collision warning system with crash mitigation uses forward-facing radar sensors and a special camera to detect when the vehicle may be approaching another vehicle too rapidly. When the system detects a potentially hazardous situation, it alerts the driver by sounding a chime and displaying a visual message in the instrument cluster. The system then applies a short burst of braking power to further alert the driver. If the driver does not respond, the system will apply additional braking to give the driver additional reaction time. If the driver then applies the brakes, but not enough braking power is being applied, the system will supplement the vehicle's braking to help avoid or mitigate a collision. Okay, with the forward collision warning, what were the three methods it alerted the driver? Audible, <laughs> Audible visual, 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 and then the failure of the brakes. Pulsating of the brakes, absolutely. So three methods. Uh, you have to be doing at least four miles an hour to activate the system. It's available on the limited and on the latitude. You can turn the system off, and that's through the Uconnect. And you can also adjust the pulsating of the brakes through the Uconnect as well. Next one is Lane Sense Lane Departure Warning Plus. This one's number 45. Uh, it actually uses the front camera that's above the rear view mirror. And simply how it works is it alerts the driver when the Renegade is unintentionally drifting outside of its lane. The Lane Sense Lane Departure Warning System relies on a camera based vision sensor to detect and measure vehicle position within the lane's painted boundaries. 
If painted lane boundaries are visually prominent and the vehicle begins to leave the lane without the turn signal on, the system will provide feedback through the steering wheel, guiding the vehicle back into the lane. A visual warning in the instrument cluster will also be displayed. If lane boundaries on the road are not visible or prominent enough for system detection, the system is disabled. <coughs> the system's timing and intensity of steering wheel torque feedback can be programmed through the <coughs> Uconnect touchscreen. A switch mounted in the center stack can disable the system if desired. All right, with the lane sense, what were the two methods that alerted the driver? The the torque in the steering wheel and a visual in the EVIC, absolutely. Uh, availability is the latitude and the limited. You have to be doing at least 37 miles an hour for the system to be activated. You can turn it off through the hard button, and you can also adjust the torque of the steering wheel through the Uconnect as well. And it also has a sensor to where if you take your hands off the steering wheel for longer than, I think it's seven seconds, uh, it alerts you to tell you to put your hands back on the steering wheel as well. Next one we have is Park Sense Rear Park Assist System, and this would be number 48, and it would be located in five positions because it actually uses uh, the four sensors that are located on the bumper along with the backup camera. And what it simply does is it aids the driver whether they're parallel parking or they're simply just backing up in general. The ParkSense Rear Park Assist System uses ultrasonic sensors and sound waves to detect stationary objects behind the vehicle. When the driver selects reverse or neutral, the system scans for objects behind the vehicle. When it detects an object, ParkSense warns the driver with a graphic display in the Electronic Vehicle Information Center and with a series of audible warnings that increase in tempo as the vehicle gets closer to the object. There are times when owners may want to disable park sense, such as when towing a trailer. The system can be turned on and off with a switch located on the instrument panel and with the custom programmable feature in the Electronic Vehicle Information Center. All right, with the park sense, rear park, visual and an audible, it alerts the driver. Uh, you have to be doing under seven miles an hour for the system to be active. Also, it's available on the latitude and on the limited. You can turn the system off through the hard key button on the dash, and you can also adjust the sensitivity. And why would we want to shut this one off? Towing. Towing, absolutely. Pretty annoying because it's picking up the trailer. It's not picking up what's behind the trailer. <clears throat> and lastly, we have the blind spot monitoring and the rear cross path detection. This would be located in two positions, 13 and 51, and they're located in the rear side corner panels and they use two ultra-wide radar sensors and simply what it does with the blind spot it alerts the driver if someone's in their blind spot so they don't accidentally turn into that lane and then with the rear cross path uh, it alerts us when we're going in reverse say at a parking lot or in a shopping center and we have two larger vehicles next to us instead of guessing if there's a car coming from our left or our right as soon as the back end pokes out just a little bit that sensor and, uh, and the radar sensor is going to start picking up any vehicles that are coming. The blind spot monitoring system informs the driver of vehicles entering a blind spot and aids the driver when changing lanes. The system uses two ultra-wideband radar-based sensors located in the vehicle's rear quarter panels to scan either side of the vehicle with a detection zone that covers approximately one lane over on both sides of the vehicle. Based on sensor input, the system notifies the driver of another vehicle in the vehicle's blind spot. Icons on the exterior rearview mirrors illuminate to indicate the presence of another vehicle. You can elect to have the system sound an audible warning as well. Rear cross path notifies you of a vehicle crossing into your path when in reverse. This feature aids you when backing out of parking spaces where the view of oncoming vehicles may be blocked. The system ignores parked cars, but sounds an alert and illuminates an icon in the exterior rearview mirrors if a vehicle approaches at a low speed from either the left or right. These two features combine to help you view your typical blind spots. Blind spot monitoring helps when you make lane changes while driving, and rear cross path helps with the blind spots when you are pulling out in reverse. All right, just like the park sense, with the blind spot in the rear cross path, it notifies the driver with a visual and an audible. There are three modes. 
You can simply turn it off if you want to. You can have it where just the icons appear in the side view mirrors, or you can have the icon and an audible come on at the same time. And availability is the latitude limited and the trailhawk on that one. Now it's important that you tell your customers this isn't autopilot. Okay, we have a few years for that. They're simply here to aid and to alert the driver. So they have to remain alert of their driving habits and be ready to still use the steering wheel and the brakes when needed. Also, all of these videos are located on OS Plus, Owner Support Plus. So you guys are uh, able to download them to your iPads, your uh, laptops, or your, um, your phones, your cell phones as well. Uh, they make a great aid when you're going over these features with the customer. Uh, you can show them the video first and then go ahead and demonstrate it with the vehicle. They're also located on iShowroom as well, so you guys can take a look at those. Uh, some of the competitors that you drove earlier, such as the Trax, the Juke, and the Soul, some of the competitive advantages that we have over those include the blind spot, the forward collision, the trailer sway, and the front wiper de-icer. So just keep that in mind when you're back at the dealerships. With that being said, we have a few more minutes before we rotate you. Uh, but other than that, you guys have a great afternoon.